All right, let's first of all, let's go over some of these comments. There's just one in particular, one or two that I want to look at. Richie says they must be getting it wrong on purpose. Yeah, I don't think they are. I think they, they've they been deceived. And so they're not relying on what the Bible says, but they're relying on what their teacher told them. You think about when you went to the public school system, you didn't... They didn't teach you to think. They they taught you to repeat. They trained you to be a parrot. So these guys are just, they're just, we see this in the world more than ever be before. People are just repeating what they've heard and not reading and thinking about what the Word of God actually says. Yeah, it, no, I'm with you all the way on. Because Jesus lays out the sequence of events in those three verses in Matthew 24. Yeah. And this is Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. And it says immediately after the tribulation. Not immediately before the tribulation. Immediately after. There's a huge difference here. And then... Uh, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and gathers together the elect. Pretty simple. It's not rocket science. Now, hold on a sec. So, okay, hold on a sec. The worst kind of arrogance is arrogance from ignorance. He's not saying there won't be a rapture. He's saying it'll happen after the tribulation. That's what I'm saying. And it looks like Richie was in agreement with me. If I misspoke, let me know. Uh, I, you know, I apologize for that, but that that is possible that I misspoke. I don't remember him saying. It doesn't matter. The very first verse you shared says so. Start in verse twenty-nine. The very first thing it says immediately. Yeah, that's why I just got done saying that. Not saying you are, but people usually confuse the tribulation with God's wrath. Those are two different events. I, I agree. I that's yeah, yeah. Did I misspoke? I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. Not saying you are. Okay, so brother, don't be foolish because he went to Bible college. The problem I have is not just with him, and I probably didn't make this clear either. It's people in general that say, oh, when I was a snot-nosed teenager, I went to Bible college, therefore I know more about the Bible than you do. I have a problem with that attitude, a serious problem. Because when you're a snot-nosed teenager and you're going to Bible college, you're not learning the Bible. You're, be you're learning to parrot a teacher. That's the, the whole issue I have with the whole... I mean, if you want to learn the Bible, read... The Bible. You don't get special knowledge by going to the Bible colleges. The special knowledge is in the Bible. And it you obtain special knowledge by having faith that the, what you're reading is the Word of God. Nothing at all. And the, I see this is the problem. People say, well, oh, well, so-and-so went to Bible college. What'd you do? Well, I was smoking dope when they were going to Bible college. But I've changed. I've turned my life around. I've committed myself to reading the Word of God. And you can't tell me that I can't know more or I can't know, yeah, I can't know as at least as much of the Bible as somebody that went to Bible college when they were a snot nosed kid. They don't have an advantage over me. And my point is they don't have an advantage over you. Don't take anybody's word for anything. Trust God. Trust the word of God. So, and I, look, this is not about one person. I've seen this uh, numerous times. And yeah, I do have a huge problem with people using that against other people. Oh, I went to Bible college. 
I know I got special information. No, you don't. In fact, it, it's real simple. If you want that extra knowledge, then have extra faith. All right? It's always been about faith. Without faith, you can't understand anything in the Bible. Okay, he brought up because that's when no, <clears throat> excuse me, brother, don't be foolish because he went to Bible college. He brought it up because that's when no, you're not damned because you didn't go to college. I don't understand that. He brought it up because that's when no, you're not damned because you didn't go to college. He brought it up because that's when no, you're not damned because you didn't go to college. I don't understand that sentence. I didn't go either. Humble yourself. Listen to what he has to say and test it with the scripture. Well, that's what I was doing. Doughhead. Yeah, his beliefs are stupid, and I, that that's what I, my point is. Is that people aren't trusting what the word of God says. They're putting their trust in parroting what their teachers have taught them. Okay, I don't, I'm not sure. I, I wish, I, maybe I misspoke. Maybe there's some sort of confusion, it seems like, because I think that was the point that I've always made, is that people do confuse tribulation with the rapture. Or, I'm sorry, tribulation with the wrath of God. The trib... The tribulation spoken of in Matthew 24 is not the wrath of God. And I've tried countless times to try to see this as, uh, you know, like, for then shall be a great tribulation. I, I've tried to envision this possibility, well, hey, maybe that is the wrath of God. I, and it, <laughs> it can't be. If any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ. See, this has to be, during the, this tribulation, this has to be a warning, or at, least, at the very least a caution, hey, that there are gonna, this is going to happen, and so this is directed to those of us that are saved. This, this is not a zombie period. And that's the only, if you consider this to be the wrath of God, then you must consider this to be a zombie period. And written in vain, because none of this would matter. It, it just, it doesn't make any sense at all. I can't understand how somebody could be so cross-eyed on that on the very simple scripture so anyways all right and so uh, there's something I want to get into uh, Richie said he watched the movie left behind for first time for good laugh it's complete fiction yeah and so it's incredible I remember when I was a kid hearing about this Left Behind movie and then people uh, saying that's not Christian, it's not supported by the Bible. I heard somebody say it, I don't know who, it must have been on TV though. Now it seems like it's an accepted doctrine by 90 plus percent of every teacher in the world, that's, it seems like. It's insanity. Alright, so anyway. I wanted to go over this video here I'm not even gonna I'm not it's an hour I'm just gonna judge everything based on this goofy image right here the resurrections and judgments all right so this thing is I'm gonna just point out well, first of all, let's identify it a little bit. First coming priesthood, judgment of the believer. 
for works that's not in the in the Bible anywhere that's completely made up I mean or at the very least it's a misunderstanding so you think your good deeds you're good well I did more than you so I'm gonna get the uh, you know I'm gonna have a bigger palace in the kingdom of that is to come. I'm going to have a nicer car than you because I did more works than you here on earth. And I'm going to have a Rolls Royce and, you know, gold watches and fancy stuff. Meanwhile, you, you didn't do nothing, so you're going to live in a box under a bridge. No, that's not, that's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible anywhere. And, in fact, there's the parable of, hey, these guys worked their butts off for like 12 hours. And then uh, some guys came in and worked for one hour. And they all got paid the same. And right here, Matthew 20. And when they came that were hired about the 11th hour, they received every man a penny. And they're like, whoa, wait a second. We've been busting our butts off all day. And these guys, they come in at the last minute and get paid the same? Where's that at? I mean, come on, fellas. Did anybody read their Bible anymore? Yeah, I think people do read their Bible, but I just don't think they believe what they read. I really, I, I mean... I really believe that because I think that what they're doing is they're saying, oh, penny. Well, let's go to the Chinese or the Indonesian language or the Greek language or even the Hebrew language. And let's try to twist this into meaning something the complete opposite. I really believe that. I think that's what's going on. So anyways, uh, but when, let's see. And when they... They came that were hired about the eleventh hour. They received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. Consider this. when You've been a believer since you were a snot-nosed little kid. And come the resurrection, you're going to have the same reward as those that believed ten minutes before Jesus Christ came. And were saved. Ten minutes. And they were old men that believed in Jesus Christ. Just, I mean, they wicked old men who lived their life in filth. All of a sudden had to change a heart. And then the next thing you know, Jesus is coming in the clouds of heaven. And they're resurrected. You, since you're a snot-nosed little kid, you've been serving the Lord. Well, you're both getting the same reward. You're not getting more. You're not getting a big mansion, fancy cars, and gold watches while that guy's going to get a box living under the bridge. That's not how it works. You're getting the same reward. There is no, oh, I got more money than you, so I'm getting more money in heaven, sort of. And that's what people are, you know, that's the attitude that I'm wholly against. And we see that. We see that... Uh, a lot of people teaching that ridiculousness. Now, where did I get that idea from? All right. So, anyways, who cares? Oh, uh, I was talking about uh, the judgment for of the believer for works. All right, and that's um, so the works that you do are not your own, but what Jesus does in you and so you don't get the glory he gets the glory uh, it's just like with Abraham you know he has to you know where of the glory right when the all for the good works that he did for if Abraham were justified by works he has where of the glory right but not before God all right second coming so this is you know this is just a jumbled mess it really is it doesn't make I can't make sense of this the judgment of the Jews you got the judgment of the believers 
four works. That's the judgment of the Jews at the second coming. That's not in the Bible either. There's not two ways to heaven. There's not the Christian way and the Jewish way. And you know, again, I, I just don't, I wonder if people even read the Bible. They have to be reading it. They're just not believing what they're reading. I honestly, sincerely believe that. All right, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. And he has made one nation... Or I'm sorry, he has made of one blood all nations. Excuse me, I said that all goofy. And has made of one blood all nations. So there's no special DNA that some people will suggest, all right? And then, and see, this doesn't make any sense. The judgment is, are you saved or are you not saved? That's the judgment. There's not multiple judgments. It's a real simple judgment, and it's this is all throughout the Bible. Are you saved or not saved? It's not whether you're a good person or a bad person. If that were the judgment, nobody would get saved. Seems like it just seems like no, people have no idea what the Bible says anywhere at all. For God has concluded them all in, oh well, uh, that's not what I was looking for, but, that, okay, well, okay, no, no, maybe that, well, hey, that'll fit though, here, for God has concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all, uh, all that, so those of us that do believe and are born of the Spirit of God, God is having mercy, has mercy on us, right, go and learn what this means, I shall have mercy mercy and not sacrifice all right galatians 3 22 but the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of jesus christ might be given to them that believe all right not it's not the promise by faith of jesus christ might be given to them that are a good person now i've actually heard people say well if you do more good than bad or more good than evil or whatever then you're going to heaven. Hey, that's great. That would mean everybody that's ever lived is going to heaven. Sounds fantastic, but it's not true. The fact of the matter is, if it's based on good and bad, we're all bad, and we're all going to hell. Well, there's only one that's good. Why callest thou me good? And see, this is what I mean. When I hear people talk, I wonder if they ever read the Bible. And he said unto them, What callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. Alright, so, and the, I think the part that gets overlooked by uh, some people is that Jesus isn't saying that he isn't good. He's just asking the question, Why he call me good? Because he, Jesus, is God Almighty. There's none good but one that is God. All right. He didn't say, "Well, I'm not good." What are you talking about? I'm not good. No, He's God. All right. So the, here we got the judgment of the believer, judgment of the Jews, judgment of the nations. People aren't smart enough to connect the dots and realize this is all the same judgment. Are you saved, or are you not saved? It's not like, well, the United States is going to get judged, and then the Chinese are going to get judged, and Mexico is going to get judged, and if your nation's a good nation, you're going to get saved. That's not, that's not how it works at all. It doesn't make any sense. There's no reason to make this. It's really, it's all the same thing. People just got to be able to connect the dots, and I think in order to connect the dots, you have to have faith. In the Word of God, you have to believe what you're reading. Without faith, man, you're going to be blind. You're going to be confused about these things. I mean, somebody went to a lot of, uh, a, you know, a lot of time, a lot of 
attention to detail to put all this nonsense together that does not make any sense at all. Okay, so we've got now we've got the judgment of the wicked dead. The judgment of the believer, judgment of the Jews, judgment of the nations, judgment of the wicked dead. I can't make any sense of that. The wicked dead? Is there... Well, anyways, who cares? So, alright, here's the problem. Uh, first of all, you got the judgment day coming and then the, the millennium. Now, the wicked dead to judgment. The wicked, okay, so the sinner's damn. So this is the ignorant part here. So you're having judgment coming and then you're having a thousand years. Is it a zombie reign? And I'm serious when I ask that question. Is that what you're teaching? That there's going to be zombies roaming the earth for a thousand years. So I can't exactly picture what you're teaching because it makes no sense. But it absolutely implies that there is a thousand year period where there are zombies roaming around. Alright, so you've got the judgment and then you got the thousand years. So the judgment of, so there's going to be what? Unsaved people. And according to your, you know, sci-fi goofy little thing here. You're going to have Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. You're going to have judgment upon the earth. And then you're going to have a thousand year period of unsaved people. Now think about that. They must be zombies. And what was the point of Jesus coming back for a thousand years? And then what happens when Jesus is finished he's done reigning for a thousand years where does he go to another planet and what kind of doctrine is this what happens when Jesus Christ stops reigning at the end of a thousand years and what was the point of Jesus coming back if the unsaved are still living none of this makes sense okay so one more thing the priesthood of Christ all right so let's sort of put a nail in this coffin right here the priesthood of Christ you got this goofy stuff going on here and then you have the millennium here so to their credit they don't exactly say the millennial reign of Christ they just got a bunch of goofy stuff and nobody can wrap their head around what's here but look the priesthood of Christ and then the millennium you got a problem you got an absolute contradiction in the scripture and I think they might uh, uh, I you know I just don't know how, how you can make this mistake all right so, like, for example, uh, let's do it this way. There we go. Okay, so blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On, s on such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priest of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him, a thousand years so clearly during this thousand year period they are priests of God and of Christ and reign with Jesus Christ during this thousand years so uh, very simply if you're saved Christ reigns in your life right now he abides in you and you abide in him and you shall never die uh, you have everlasting life so if you are saved you are called 
to preach the gospel to every creature you are called oops you are a uh, a royal priesthood right let's go to this here first Peter chapter 2 verse 9 but ye are a chosen generation that means you are chosen of God God has chosen you doesn't matter if you chose God what matters is God chose you and ordained you a royal priesthood you are a royal priesthood right now it's not in the future the devil might want you to think well you're not a royal priest or you're not a priest of God right now you, you will be in the future but right, right now you're not that's what the devil would tell you that's not what God is telling you a royal you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation he's talking about people that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ people that are saved people that are born of the Spirit of God we people are the holy nation of God they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a blessed and holiest are those of us that are saved because the second death has no power over us remember what Jesus says he that believeth on me shall never die believest thou this And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Shall never die. The second death has no power over you. None at all. Now, fear not them that can kill the body and not the soul. Fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul. Or, I'm sorry, destroy both soul and body in hell that's God fear God don't fear them all right fear God because he's able to do that now of course when we are born of the Spirit of God we are promised and guaranteed that we shall never die and um, and uh, the, the second death okay so our body will die once and but then our soul will die if we're not saved and that's what happens to all the unsaved wicked people that they their soul is killed destroyed forever and ever and there's nothing worse that could ever happen to them than that right there all right so uh, the second death has no power over us right now I mean you could take a sledgehammer and beat my brains out you're not gonna kill me I'm like a zombie man well not exactly right because I won't come back until he comes back that is the Lord Jesus Christ all right so he's promised us eternal life he's promised us the resurrection okay so and we are peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so um, it says old oh, priesthood of Christ we are a royal priesthood this extends all the way to the end of the world and beyond so if Jesus reigns forever then we reign forever all right what's the oops what's the Luke 1 33 is that the one I'm looking for let's find out and he shall reign over the house of Jacob that's us those that are saved make no mistake about it this is not rocket science this is very simple stuff and he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever and is of his kingdom there shall be no 
end. That right there alone completely and utterly destroys the idea that Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. This is a wash. This is complete nonsense. This is not, this is um, buffoonery. Really. It's nonsense. It's, you know, this, and this is what people love to do. They love to make these very articulate, you know, very nice. Uh, I mean, look at who could draw that good? I can't draw that good. I have a hard time drawing stick figures. But people are really artistic, very detailed, and it looks nice, man, but it's not true. And look, the Bible is very simple. All right, so you had uh, the, the birth of baby Jesus from the virgin, which was prophesied in the Old Testament. Right, you go back to like Isaiah 9. Right? Unto us a child is born. Oh, I'm going to make this real simple. Real quick, real simple. Let's go to Isaiah. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, of course, I guess I should better cover this part here in Isaiah. We're going to have to do this again. Isaiah 7 therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel alright so, and then of course uh, we read that same a parallel if you will uh, in Matthew that same thing Matthew 1 Verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So Jesus is God with us. He is the Christ, the Messiah that was prophesied all throughout the Old Testament. And he has come, and uh, he, del you know, he delivered the good news, and now... Uh, we that believe in him deliver the good news through him and he died covering all the sins for the entire world and he resurrected into eternal life that through him we can do the same he ascended to heaven with the promise that he would return for those of us that are born of God those of us that believe in him and then of course you You've got uh, people in the Old Testament and the New Testament as well asking, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus just lays it out very plainly, better than anybody in the entire Bible. The Lord God has laid it out very simply for us. Okay. Uh, you know, and look, the, I think really this uh, parable, let's see if this is the one here. Yeah, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. So if you take the parable of the wheat and the tares, they grow together, and then at harvest time, they are separated. That's as simple as it gets, and that's, the, that's the, what's going to happen. There's not this crazy bowl butter stuff here. There's all this stuff. It's nonsense. I mean, come on, man. It's real simple and it's told to you the same way over and over all throughout the Bible I mean you go to Daniel for crying out loud and this is what I wonder do people even read the Bible or are they just listening oh, uh oh oh wait a sec I'm sorry no am I, am I mistaken here no I think I got it wrong, didn't I? I think I got it wrong. Not resurrection, but it's the same thing here in Daniel. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, 
and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is the same thing. The resurrection, right? And it's the same thing that Jesus talks about, right? Some, you know, this is, look, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt, which means that's, I mean, that's the judgment, the wheat and the tares. It's real simple. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that's it. That's the judgment. Are you saved or not saved? It Look, when he comes, that determination has already been made uh, of who is saved. Now, if you're not saved, man, you better hurry up and get saved, right? You, I mean, you're running out of time because if he comes today, you might be doomed. Why are you putting it off another day? You're not going to know. Hey, look, when Jesus comes, it's going to be on a day just like today. And you're not going to know the difference between this day and the day that Jesus comes. And he might come this day. You know, who knows? You don't know. There's no way for you to know. It's not going to be broadcast on CBS News. That, hey, Jesus is coming today. You better start believing in him. That's not going to happen. It's going to catch you by surprise. And so don't be caught by surprise. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If, you, if you're not already saved, it's time. It's, it's time. What are you waiting for? All right. So, and, the, and again, this is very simple stuff. This is not rocket science. This is rocket science that will lead you straight. You think it's taking you to the moon. It's going to take you straight to the bottom pits of... What's that say in Isaiah 14? You think that rocket ship is going to take you to the moon, right? No. No. It's not. It's going to bring you down to hell. To the sides of the pit. It's not. This ain't taking you to the moon, Jack. This is taking you to hell. This is nothing here. And what all you're doing, here's the problem. This is what really burned, burns me. Is that people are saying, just wait until Jesus comes back. When you see him come back, then you'll know without a doubt that Jesus is real. And then you can start believing in him. I've had people actually come to me and say, I'm just going to wait until I see him coming. There's no reason for me to believe in him now. I mean, how dreadful, how awful is that? And whether people are honest enough to admit it or not, I think that's what a whole bunch of people are saying. Well, I'll just wait till he comes. I'm not going to believe him now. I'm going to do whatever I want and ignore this idea that God is watching over us. And really. Because they know that he's coming. They hear it all the time. They ignore it. And they think they can wait. You can't wait. And people like this are teaching this idea that they can wait. So this, to me, that's why I say, I think this is directly from the devil. You cannot wait. The day of salvation is today. All right, so was there one more point that I wanted to make, or is that good enough? I mean, for crying out loud, it's real simple stuff, man. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and judgment is made. Are you saved or not saved? Same thing in Matthew 24. Same thing in Mark, Mark 13. Same thing in Luke 21. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. And judgment is made. There's a great sound of a trumpet. The angels gather together the, excuse me, the elect. That's the wheat. The separation of the wheat from the tares, right? This is this is all throughout the Bible, like, like I showed you in Daniel. Some, all shall wake, or some shall wake. Excuse me. Some to everlasting life, and some to everlasting contempt. And that that decision to be saved is not made later. That decision to be saved is made now for those of us that are saved God has already saved us we are already born of God so we have nothing to fear when it comes to judgment day when Jesus comes in the, in the clouds of heaven that's good we're not 
in danger of anything at all. All right, and so that's why you know, for one, Jesus says, uh, or Isaiah says that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and you know, uh, without Jesus Christ, you can't have any peace. And Jesus, one of my favorite passages is, "Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. <clears throat> excuse me, not as the world gives." give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid if you are born of God you've got nothing to be afraid of you have absolute peace in the Lord Jesus Christ embrace the Lord Jesus Christ you got nothing to worry about at all nothing at all to worry about now if you believe in this nonsense buddy you're in trouble all right and so look just get it right man think about this if you care about the end time stuff get it right man it's simple very simple right we are the wheat we that are saved are the wheat the enemy is the tares that's the judgment are you saved or not saved. At the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is judgment made. Are you saved or not saved? Are you born of God or are you not born of God? It's easy. <laughs>